This tutorial will talk about how to qualify designs using Chart's modulator. This is the fifth tutorial in a series of eight total. It's going to talk about how to qualify designs using Chart's modulator. We'll first discuss how to enter design files, and then review how to enter design details, followed by application details, and finally, installation details. We'll get started by navigating to chartindustries.com. I'll then have you scroll down to chartparts.com. And again, this can be entered directly if you need. Just www.chartparts.com. We'll then sign in. I have a, a little app here that signs me in quickly. Okay, you'll now see that the modulator tab has appeared. Now that I'm in the modulator, you'll see my dashboard. You won't quite have the same display because uh, as administrator I have a few more columns. To find my particular project, I'll sort by company. This is the one that I'm going to be demoing today. I'll expand it to see the design names. The uh, particular design name I'm interested in is the hospital project, first floor. Okay, now that you're into this particular design, you'll see four tabs. These are what we call our qualification tabs. We have the design details, the drawing, the pick list, and the quote. I'll start by explaining how to manage your files. Files are anything that will help support your design. They can be pictures from when you were on site, they can be an isometric sketch, they can be specifications, anything. But it, typically, it works pretty much just how any file manager does. You go out and select your file. This particular one that I have is on my desktop. Just going to find it quickly here. There it is. And then I upload it. Now you'll see that I've got two essentially here. I'll just delete that one. But that gives you a, a good demonstration of how to manage your files. I try to keep them all in one spot. Next I'll talk about the first qualification tab called the design details. Basically you enter in the design name. I'm calling this one Hospital Project First Floor. You can have a description for that. Uh, we like you to enter in uh, a design creation date. This one I started on April 13th or April 1st of 2013. Uh, it's good to put in a probability. You know how you, know, you think this is really going to happen or not. There's a little bit of a help text here that if you hover you'll see what the difference between 40% like probability and 50% probability is. We then uh, have you enter in the uh, expected system purchase date followed by the expected approval date. To understand that there's no uh, real business rules behind this. This is really just a place to capture information. So it's not like this date. Uh, notice that these two dates are the same, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But there's really nothing that's driving these two dates. Um, there's no business rules or logic behind them. Okay, I'll go over how to capture the application details on the second qualification tab. The first thing that we want to know is what is your starting point? You know, everything kind of is based upon that. But in order to get a good start, we need to know if it's an apps unit. Or is it a uh, flange fitting? What kind of starting point are we going from here? One of the most typical ones is what we call MPT fitting. We then want to know what kind of liquid service your application is requiring. For this hospital, I'm going to select liquid oxygen. The next box here that's kind of surrounded here is about system sizing. And this is really about whether you need a pilot app or not. You can, if you know a little bit about cryovent service, you can either pick yes or no yourself. Um, if there's a little bit of a help highlight here. Uh, it says if liquid service is required in 10 seconds or less, 
it will require a cryo vent. If no cryo vent is specified, it may take 5 to 60 minutes to get liquid service. We also, if you, if you can, it's nice to estimate how many hours per day you need liquid service because if the system is continuously running, you may have to vent that gas as well. So fill that out as best as you can. And, and again, there are no business rules behind this. We're just trying to gather information here to help you with your design. And then once you to specify whether it's metric or English units, and then your maximum allowable working pressure, MAWP, this is referred to as. Typically a system is 0 to 150 PSI. Our Python systems will get as high as 400 PSI. And then if you need something more than that, you're going to have to go to what we call our select systems. For this, I'll pick 0 to 150. And then we'd like you to specify your flow, what kind of flow is required. In our catalog, we have a table that helps you, um, based upon the diameter, based upon the flow, you can pick a diameter of pipe. Uh, finally, we ask that you check this box that says, I understand a relief valve must be located anywhere liquid service can be trapped, such as between two valves. So imagine two valves being turned off and then liquid trapped between them. Well, that liquid is going to heat. It's going to want to expand. And so um, you know, you'll probably pop one of the reliefs if you do that. So we really want to have these, from a safety standpoint, we want to make sure that there's a relief valve somewhere. Uh, between those valves. With that, um, we'll go on to the next screen. One more note on cryo vent sizing or system sizing before we move on. We, our general rule is to have a cryo vent at least every 100 to 200 feet. So again, for long runs, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to specify a cryo vent. Okay, now we'll move on to our design requirements screen. Okay, design requirement is all about, again, trying to just understand what, what kind of system you're going to need. Uh, there's a spot here uh, that you can enter any unique specifications that your design may adhere to. This is real common in Europe and uh, I would say some parts of Asia and, and the U.S., uh, but mainly Europe requires additional specs. Uh, there's a CRN here. This is... Uh, some of, uh, if, if the system is going to Canada, they're often asking for a CRM, Canadian Registration Number. Oxygen cleaning, uh, with this system, um, for a hospital, we're going to want it oxygen cleaned. Another question is uh, AI inspection. Sometimes we have to bring in a third party inspector to uh, you know, ensure that we've built the pipe as we dictated or as, as, as was specified. Some systems, some customers want cold shock tested in the factory before it ships. That's something that we can do. Keep in mind that these um, extra charges may apply to these, uh, depending upon what you're picking. And, again, and no business rules. Uh, if we see this uh, yes here in the check marks, we're going to have to look at that special uh, once it comes in the factory. Uh, and we'll price that, and we'll work it out with you what that cost will be. Material traceability is another one that we offer. Some customers want that. Some customers want x-ray. Typical, typical choices are 5, 10%, um, 100%. And then pressure tests. What kind of pressure tests do you want? Uh, and then finally, shipment really uh, will change um, if it's an international shipment. A lot of times that's by flight, so our sections can't be any more than 20 feet. And then if there's any special document required, uh, sometimes there's a shipping document and, and you have to enter that here. All right, the next design qualifi qualification tab is installation requirements. Okay, so this, in this tab, we're just trying to gather information about your installation. First thing that we ask is, it, is it required? Uh, in some situations, our customers uh, do their own installation. 
in other situations they want us to do it. So if you want us to do it, then we'll ask you to click that. We'll then want to know if it's new or existing construction. And then if the piping, is it a new piping system? Are we working, um, uh, if it's not new, is it an existing uh, vacuum jacket system? Or is it a non-vacuum jacket system like X50 or foam insulation? Okay, then I'll click on this and it'll show you a few dimensions that we're going to ask you for. Um, again, we're, we're just trying to understand how you're going to be installing this. We want to know the pad width, this A dimension. We'd like to know the B dimension, pad depth. We'd like to know the surface, what kind of a surface is this. Um, we want to know the distance it is from the building. We'd like to know this D dimension, which is really how high up the wall do we have to go in order to penetrate the wall. We'd like to know uh, that wall thickness, and then we'd like to know that the uh, the ceiling thickness if we are if we are penetrating through the ceiling. So these kind of um, the, this kind this information really helps us to understand um, you know what we're up against when we're installing this. Okay, now that we uh, are back from this uh, installation example. Um, you know, this is where you would actually enter in those dimensions if you have them. Uh, again, there's no business rules behind this. We're just trying to uh, glean information so that we can give you an estimate on, on the install if, if uh, in fact, we are doing it. Uh, a couple more questions here and we'll be done. Uh, we'd like to know if there are any building obstructions in the way of the piping runs. Um, if you are going to be exhausting this system you know, to the inside or to the outside. Uh, we'd like to know if a heated cryo is required. And then obviously if you do click uh, that we are exhausting it, then uh, you want to know if you want that exhaust piping uh, installed as well. Okay, with that, that really concludes our four uh, design qualification tabs. This concludes our tutorial on how to qualify designs. The next tutorial in this series will be on the drawing screen.